today I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to be making my DIY pinwheel wreath. First of all, I'm gonna show you all the things I'm using to make the wreath. I'll show you where I'm at in the process right now, and then I'll show you the finished product when I'm all done. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to need is a wreath. Now I chose to use the straw wreath just because it was cheapest. I got a Joann's, I used a 50% off coupon on my phone. You can also buy this pre-wrapped with burlap. It was twice the price, but that's not really an issue. Honestly, it would save you a lot of time. <laughs> it took me a little while, quite a while, to wrap this in yarn. I already had this white yarn, so I figured it would just be easiest just to use that. So I wrapped half of it just because it takes a long time to do, and because I'm gonna be covering up all the space, it really wasn't necessary for me to wrap all of it, but if you are a perfectionist, wrap it all, girl. Wrap it all. Now, I'm not gonna say that this wreath is perfect or I'm a professional wreath maker or anything. This is basically just something I've been doing on all my Vlogmas vids and thought some of you guys might be interested on how I did it. So this is where it's at with the wrapping. So next, what I did is I picked out some things that I would want to use on my wreath. So I picked out this word, Joy. I got this from the dollar store. I also picked out these silver sparkle flowers. I wanted things that would go with my decor in my home and things that I liked and I like sparkly things for the holidays. Next I wanted to pick out a color scheme. So I got this paper pack from Michaels. I actually bought it last December and I got it on sale and this is nice because it already has papers that are going to go together already. This is a great way to go if you want to do something like this where you're using lots of colors. And then what I did is I went through my paper collection which if you do paper crafting you know what I'm talking about. And I picked out some other options that I can kind of audition together, see how I like them, and mix and match. So when I'm picking paper, I like to look for different textures. I like to look for complementary colors. I like to make sure there's a balance. And I also like to make sure that there's not a repetitive pattern like too many polka dots or too many stripes. And that way you can kind of get a good mix of different types of things that are going to be appealing to your eye. And most of all, I pick things that I like. So just go with what you think looks good. So for my pinwheels, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. You can actually just like old school, take your paper, measure like half an inch, draw a line. You can use like a little perforated roller and then fold it back and forth. I am lucky to have one of the Sizzix Big Shots from Stampin' Up. So this is what I have, and this makes your life so, 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 so much easier. And then it comes with these little mats. They have two different sizes. This is the large size, and then I have the actual die. So I think this die was, it was kind of expensive. It was about $50. I bought this last Christmas, but I've used this several times. I used it to make little cards, like I made pinwheels to give on little presents last year. You could do so many different things with this. I've also used this for decorating centerpieces for parties and things. So for me, because this makes my life so much easier, it's worth the money. But if you're just starting out, you can get some little, they have other little things that will help you like make the little pinwheels even and stuff, some other little tools, I guess I would say. So you don't have to have this, but this is what I'm using. Also, I like to put something in the center of the pinwheel. It doesn't have to necessarily match what your paper scheme is because you can cover it up easily but i like to use punches you can just use a circle this is just a scallop circle again this is from stampin up it just makes it easy because you just slide in punch 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 you're not spending time cutting out circles all these things just make your life a little bit easier and then i'll show you how i use that in a minute and then the other thing that you might not think of is i get clothes pins this helps in the drying process and of course i have my hot glue gun which is glued to my paper so it doesn't burn my table. Alrighty, I think that is everything. So let me show you what the pinwheels look like. So this is the full size pinwheel. And to make one this size, you need a sheet of paper. You need two pieces that are identical that are this 12 by 12 sheets. And then what I do is I fold them over each and then I make a sandwich and run them through. And this is what the finished pinwheel looks like. So I'll show you now how to make the sandwich. So you take by having your plastic board here. I like to put my die face up so I can see where I'm lining it up to cut and then I put my paper down and then I put this over it and make a sandwich. Then what I do is I run that through my big shot. I feed it through just like this and then when I crank the handle it automatically will cut through it. I don't have any problem cutting through the four layers of paper 
but the little lines that it gives you to fold the paper do get less every time. So here's a little scrap that I cut off because you get this one sheet and then to make the different sizes you just cut it to where you want it. So this pinwheel right here would have been full size and then I cut off this outside and so this can make a tiny pinwheel. So here I have two sheets of 12 by 12 paper. I just folded them in half. I'll make my sandwich just like so. I just kind of try to line it up so it cuts the same. But these things tend to wiggle a little bit so I don't worry about it too much. And then I put it in. So here I'll open it up. And then uh, so now you can see you've got the nice pointy side and the scallop side. So what I'm gonna be doing with this one is I'm actually going to do the pointy side, but I'm going to trim a little bit of the bottom because I want it to be just slightly smaller than this so I can have different shapes and textures. You can see those little lines, that's where it's perforated. So you could go and like, go like this and flip it over and fold it again, flip it over. But I actually find the quickest way to do it is to just like use this middle finger and just flip it down, up, down, up, down, just like that. So I'm pushing it down, pushing it up, pushing it down, pushing it up. And this does all the work for you and having those nice little creases. So makes it really simple. Then what I do is I glue all the pieces together. So then I'll hurry and do this little piece. Okay, with these smaller ones, two pieces is usually adequate. So I can just get my glue going here. And this is why I have these little clothespins. So I'll just push this together and glue it. And then I'll take my little clothespin and kind of snap it on. Then I'll just kind of make sure I've got it on there right. When it's a bigger one, I can use two or three of these little clothespins with the smaller one. Usually just the one will be totally fine. So you want to make sure that you're gluing it the right way. And with how they're folded, they're going to all turn out a little differently depending whether you fold it back or fold it forward. So match those up, give it a little clothespin. So then I just sit and let that cool for a little bit. So now I'm gonna make the little button. So I just use whatever paper that goes with it that I'm okay cutting up. And I'll just punch two of these out. One for the top, one for the bottom. These should be dry now, so I'll take these off. And I usually start on the bottom side and I just squish them together. There, I'll give you a backdrop so you can actually see what I'm doing. So you just kind of hold this and squish it together. Then while I'm holding this, I will take my glue gun, give me some good old glue there in the center. Then I'll come in right with my dot and place that on the center. And then I just hold this for a little bit for that to dry. If you try to turn it over too soon, then it's gonna spring apart and you're gonna lose your shape. But I try to kind of let it hold it from the center a little just so I can get a most natural shape. Okay, now that it's sticking together most of the way, I can flip it over. And while it's still just a teeny bit warm, you can reposition it in the front and make sure it looks the way you want it to. Same thing, go in with the glue. And I like to make sure I get where the points touch or else it's not gonna hold together very well. Put my little button there. And you could do the same thing with like an actual button or whatever. And then I take my little punch and multi-purpose. I leave it down like that to hold it. So here's a sneak peek of the large one, just drying. And then just the same, I will just scrunch this together, glue it, and then we will start positioning them on our wreath. Alrighty, so now I'm kind of auditioning where I want everything to go. I just kind of placed it overall, like where I think it might look nice. There's kind of the overview of that. 
So I'm pretty happy with this placement, but I want to get it kind of glued down and I'm sure I'll move things around. For the centers, I just cut out some circles and I had a little snowflake punch for that glitter paper, which I think really ties the flowers in and the little letters in. So we'll get this all glued up and it'll be ready to go. All right, guys, so I finished it. I did move a few things around just as I started really gluing it down and everything. Hindsight 2020, I wish I would wrap the whole thing just because I, you can see a little bit of it from the side, so I thought I should let you guys know that, but I did make a little hanger and this is it. I am so happy with how it's turned out. I think it is really beautiful. Overall, this cost me less than $10 because I already had the paper on hand and a lot of the other things I already had the Silver Flowers Dollar Store, the Joy Dollar Store wreath on sale. So honestly, if you have the stuff to do this, you can make it pretty cheap. You can kind of tell that I haven't been outside today because look, oh my gosh, it's so snowy. Okay, I'm going to come out here so I can give you the, the full look. Oh. Gotta hurry because my battery is about to die. Oh my gosh, it's way deeper than I thought. <gasps> this is like a foot of snow. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Look at this. Okay. There it is. Beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.